There's one crucial element you might be overlooking in your edit that's seriously limiting your video's potential, and that's sound design. Sound design. Sound design. Sound design. Like, like that. Sound design. When it comes to editing, especially if you don't have a ton of experience, it's super easy to obsess over how your video looks and kind of leave it at that. But the truth is, if you're skipping sound design, you're leaving half of your video on the cutting room floor. Think of sound design almost as seasoning your food. You know, like, sure, you can make a meal without it, but is it gonna be as good? No. So I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to easily up your sound design game to dramatically improve your videos. But first, let's start with what is sound design? Well, in super basic terms, it just means designing and editing all the audio elements of your video. From your voice, to your background music, to your room tone, sound effects, all of that is part of sound design. And a common mistake that people make is thinking that sound design is just adding background music to your video and calling it a day. And while that is a step in the right direction, we can do more because adding in sound effects is just as important. You know, this stuff. And it doesn't have to be stupid cartoonish stuff like I just did. Even subtle sound effects like adding a whoosh to this zoom in complement what the viewer seeing on screen and can make a video feel much more polished. Like here's the same exact zoom in with no sound. See how much emptier that felt? So okay, now that we went over the basic principles of sound design and why it's important, let's go over some tips and tools you can use in Descript to make your sound design sound the best. First things first, before we can really hone in on our sound design, we wanna make sure that we're listening at a comfortable and constant volume to ensure continuity with our audio levels. See, because it's really easy to raise and lower your computer's volume when something's too quiet or too loud, when we really should be changing the audio levels in Descript. So I usually set my volume to about 70 85, 80%, and I don't touch it until I'm done sound designing. Next, I like to open my settings, go to the view tab, and toggle volume and timeline, which gives us this cute little audio meter. Now I don't have to just go off of what I'm hearing, I have a visual marker of where I want my audio levels to be hitting. And all right, now that we're all set to edit, let's get into some tools. First, we got one of my favorite things about Descript, the stock panel. Because now I have all the music and sound effects I could possibly need right here. I just open up the stock panel, search for what I'm looking for, and throw that sucker into my video. And for music, I always wanna make sure that the song I choose isn't too busy or distracting. And I find that when songs are a little bit too busy, they kind of take attention away from what I'm saying. And no one's allowed to take attention away from me. Next, we got good old studio sound. Because remember, your voice is also a part of sound design. So with my script track selected, I'll open up my layer panel and toggle it on. Just like that, the script will enhance my voice while I get to sit back and do nothing, which is my favorite thing to do. Next up, we got the ducking feature. And no, before you get excited, this has nothing to do with ducks. Disappointed me too. Ducking ensures that all your background music and sound effects are quieter than your voice so that it doesn't get drowned out. And in the settings, you can choose the level that all the other audio tracks will be reduced to. So now you don't have to worry about your viewers struggling to understand you without subtitles. And lastly, we got the limiter. And this does exactly what it says. It limits the audio levels of your video to never go past a certain threshold. It's basically like a safeguard. And this is super helpful to prevent clipping, which is when your audio levels are so high that they exceed the maximum level that speakers can handle, which makes it sound super distorted and just really, really uncomfortably loud. The way I like to use the limiter is by making a duplicate composition of my final video that's ready to be published, flattening that composition with all layers, then adding a limiter to minus three dB. Doing it this way ensures that all the audio tracks in my video never exceed this threshold. And so I won't suddenly blow out my viewer's eardrums. And all right, just like that, I can take a video like this. Getting decent lighting is easier than you might think. And to prove it to you, I'm gonna make a basic three-point lighting setup with some cheap $20 lights. And turn it into a video like this. Getting decent lighting is easier than you might think. And to prove it to you, I'm gonna make a basic three-point lighting setup with some cheap $20 lights. Which again, sounds much more polished and ultimately leads to a video that's a lot more engaging to watch. So next time you're editing, remember to also focus on sound design. Design. And in five years, when you rightfully win your Oscar for sound design, make sure to send it to me so I can sell it on eBay. Those things probably go for tons. All right, go leave me. Thanks. <laughs>